Hi, today I'm going to talk about shape optimization. I'm going to show you how you can use M calibration to find an, uh, an optimal shape in addition to the material parameters for a very specific simple example that I made up. So here is a 2D finite element model. It's a cube, as you can see. And I'm shearing this sideways from the top surface. So the top is moved to the right, the bottom is held fixed. And what we see when we shear this is that the sides are not straight. This is something that happens, it's well known when you do experimental tests and simple shear. The sides of the specimen doesn't stay straight at finite deformation. So what I thought I'd do here is to show you how you can use M calibration to find what the initial sh shape should be. It can't be a cube here in order to get straight edges at the final position uh, in the sheared shapes. And the second objective is to also um, as part of this, decide what the modulus of this proper, this material should be in order to reach a given a force. So I'll specify the force I want this to take to shear it to 50% engineering strain. And uh, I want to find its properties and I need to find the initial shape of this uh, block here in order to reach the final target ge geometry that I'm interested in. And how do we do this in M calibration is the topic today. So let's get started. The third, first thing we need to do is to look and create a model generation script. So I'm going to start Abacus CIE and start generating a model for us that uh, includes the steps that are needed to create this FE model. So I have actually gone ahead and created the model now. Let's take a look at some of the key setup that, uh, things that I had to do to make this suitable for shape optimization. So you look at this uh, model as I have defined here, you see that the it's not a square anymore. It's, I have given it some kind of shape to the left and right side. So I basically went in and then when I defined the section for the edges that I want to optimize the shape of, I defined them not with straight lines, but with splines. So there is an option to create uh, through point splines, so cubic splines in Abacus CAE. So I create one, two, three, four uh, control points on the left and four control points on the right. And the target here, the goal is to have M calibration search for the positions of these control points on the left and right sides, and then generate automatically the mesh, run the mesh, and then keep optimizing these control point positions until we get a given target shape and the final configuration. So the beauty here with Abacus CAE is that when you set up a model using CAE, it saves the Python commands that are used to create the model. And I can, I can use that file as a template that I slightly modify to make it suitable for shape optimization. So let's take a look at the model generation script. So I have opened the, the Abacus uh, script file. It's called abacus.py. And I renamed it to create femall script.py. And I basically kept all the commands in here and I just made a few little changes to it. And the beauty here is that you don't need to memorize all these, what these commands do, but you just need to make some changes to make this suitable for what we're trying to do. So the first change that I made was I could find a region in this uh, Python file where the spline points of the left and right side were defined. And I, I replaced those fixed coordinates that were in there with values that are read in from an external file. So I'm opening a file here. This is Python commands with open parameters.imp. So this is a file that will be generated by M calibration at a later time. I then read in the contents of this file and assign those to these control points. So that's the first step. Then I also have to specify the material properties. We want to optimize not only the shape, but the material properties too. So I see here further down in this file that there is a command that creates a hyperelastic material model and I define, define the hyperelastic parameters mu and kappa which I also get from this external file. So that's what I do in this model generation script. I set up the model based on the control parameters that it gets from an external file. The next thing I need to set up is the data extraction script. So let's take a look at that. So here is my uh, file. Uh, it's a Python file for extracting the data after a single finite element simulation has been run. So this is a little file that I, I wrote from scratch. It's really easy to write these uh, little files that basically 
read in the deformations of the sides and the reaction force on the top and saves that in a very specific format. So just go through this file really quickly here. Um, when you read in uh, data from an abacus simulation, you start with from ODB access import star. It allows you to uh, use some functionality that comes with abacus. Then I just open the ODB file. I create node sets, or I read in the definition of the node sets, because when I have these cubic splines defined on the sides of the specimens, I don't necessarily know which nodes are in each of these node sets. I need to actually find it, because these are automatically meshed by CAE in each, for each configuration. So I read in the node sets using this command here. This is, it reads in the node set for the top, for the left, and the right. And then I, I loop through all the nodes in those load set steps, and I save, uh, I find the coordinates on the left and right, and then I can find how close those coordinates are to where I want them to be. I want this line to be straight uh, on the left side and the right side. So I compare that and I create an error between the actual position in the deformed configuration to where I want it to be, which is this straight line uh, in this case. Then I also read in all the reaction forces and I sum them up and I compare that to the target value in this case of 10 newtons. Then I save that information into a single data file which contains uh, three data points. The first one is the error on the left side, error on the right side, and the error in the fourth. That's the second file that I need to create. The, the third and last step is to set up M calibration to use these two script files. And uh, here's my M calibration file. Uh, after I clicked run once. So the, the key settings I need to do here, there are two things I need to do. The first one is to set up the material model. And the material model here now also needs to contain the geometry information. So let's see how I do that. I click on set material model, and I have now a material model template. It's an abacus material model template that I created these variables first. So they are star star, uh, which means it's an abacus command, co comment. And then I have variables a1 through A4. So these would be positions, horizontal displacements of the control nodes on the left side. The B variables, B1 to 4, are the four control points on the right side. And the mu parameter is the shear modulus. So this is how M calibration will communicate with Abacus. It will create this file that will be read by the Python scripts that we talked about earlier. So this is the first thing. So if I save this, we'll see these are the, the parameters that we'll search for. The first eight are geometry-specific parameters, and the ninth one is the material property. And we can combine them in any order we like. This is what's just what I did here. And then the second and last thing we need to set up is the load case. So in this case, we don't have traditional experimental data. We have data in a slightly different format. And we're using the general external solver option as the load case type. I need to read in my experimental data here and the experimental data that I'm interested in is called target data and this is the contents of this file so it has these different error values uh, at these different positions so left right and top reaction force so that's what I have here and then as the data generation uh, script I use this file we just looked at setup and run.py and uh, M calibration will generate this file called parameters.imp, uh, which contains the, the geometry and material properties, which is then read by setup and run uh, file. And our Python file for, for setting that up contains also, as I showed earlier, the data extraction commands. So I can let the data extraction box here to be zero. I don't need to care about it, but I do need to say the name of that file. This script file creates this file, which is then read by M calibration. So if I, that's it, really. I can now run this and see what happens. And if I just click run once, where I have all A values to be 0, all B values to be 0, and mu equals to 1, basically straight lines and the shear modulus of 1, I get a very large error in uh, NMAD fitness, and normalized mean absolute difference fitness of 70. But this is just the starting point, and that's what we showed earlier, how the material uh, shifts in a way that doesn't give you the target shape that we're after. Um, if I run this for a little bit, this is the final results that I get. We'll see that the error now is down to 10 instead of 70. It's significantly better. And here are the values that it searched found. So the, on the left side, 
it shifts everything to the right. On the right side, it seems to shift them to the left, uh, as you can see by these numbers. And this is the shear modulus that gives you the, error, the smallest possible error in this case. So if you want to look at the results, let's open Abacus and take a look at the final shape that gives us these values. All right, I just opened the Abacus um, uh, viewer, Abacus CAE, with the final geometry that the software uh, found to give the best shape in the deformed state. So here it is. We'll see that the initial shape has a narrower distance here, the width in the center than the edges. And if we look at the deformed shape by clicking on this, we'll see that with that specific shape, we get edges that are uh, as straight as one would like, which was the target here. And the way to achieve that was to modify the initial shape in this way. And we also were able to get the target reaction forces at the top as we shifted this to the right. So the purpose here was to show you how you can use M calibration to find not only material parameters, but also shapes and geometries or anything else that you want to search for. And you can combine them in different ways, as I demonstrated here. Um, the way to use Abacus, uh, uh, as I showed here, is, is really nice and powerful because it comes with this Python API, which is easy to use. And Python is a very powerful language to, to manipulate these things. Um, I went through this really quick. So if you have any questions, you can ask them below. Or you can also take a look at the document, the article that I wrote, and that is also referenced in the, in the list below. Uh, I hope you found this useful. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.